Hey guys, coming up today on Sports Spectrum, it's Super Bowl week, and you know what that means when it comes to Sports Spectrum. It's our tradition. For the last seven or eight years, we've been talking to the team chaplains of the Super Bowl representatives, and we got the 49ers and the Chiefs, Super Bowl 58, and Reverend Earl Smith, San Francisco 49ers team chaplain, returns to Sports Spectrum, and we get to take a little peek inside to what it's been like spiritually within that locker room of the San Francisco 49ers. And certainly we're going to talk to him about Brock Purdy being the quarterback and a guy that we've had on this show and a man of faith. And Reverend Earl Smith's going to kind of take us inside to Bible studies, team chapels, and opportunities to share the gospel and what this experience is like for him going back to another Super Bowl as the team chaplain of the 49ers. Reverend Earl Smith, it's coming up in just a moment here on Sports Spectrum. First, I want to remind you about our Sports Spectrum magazine. You can subscribe today right now over at sportspectrum.com. It's faith-filled, family-friendly, clean content, perfect for the kiddos, and very affordable. Go check out sportspectrum.com right now. And when you check out and order a one-year subscription, we got a little Sports Spectrum podcast bonus for you. 15% off a one-year subscription. Simply put in the code PODCAST15. Podcast 15, and you can save 15% off and get that one year subscription to Sports Spectrum's magazine. Faith filled, family friendly content. Everyone's looking for that, especially for our kids. Subscribe today over at sportspectrum.com. Well, it's great to have Earl Smith, San Francisco 49ers team chaplain, back here on Sports Spectrum. And when we're talking to him at this time of year, it means that team has had a pretty good season. Great to see you, Reverend Earl. Thanks for being back here on Sports Spectrum. Great to see you again, Jason. Thank you for invitation. Absolutely. We love to talk to our chaplain friends. Uh, the sort of week leading up to the Super Bowl it just gives us a little bit of perspective on looking back and kind of hearing some of the cool things that God has done within your life and through that locker room. But first, I just got to ask you for a reaction now that it, you've won the NFC Championship, uh, a great game, uh, a stressful game, a great comeback for the 49ers in a Super Bowl 58 appearance. What's, what's the feeling right now? for Reverend Earl Smith? Uh, I'm excited for the guys. I'm excited personally. Uh, my my children were there to be with me for the game and uh, grandchildren. So that for me, it was an exciting moment uh, just to be able to allow them to share in that with me. Uh, for the players, uh, Trent Williams, all the years in the, in the league and He's going to the Super Bowl yeah. and looking at the expression on his face and realizing that he had made made it to a point that he really was attempting to get to. It's just it's awesome for me to look at those guys and just see that the work they put in, there's a value there and God has rewarded that. Not that he hasn't rewarded other teams and other players, but in this particular case, looking at my guys and just saying, look, guys, look what God did for us. Hmm. Do you just curious from a just a fan perspective? Are you on the sidelines during the game, or are you more in the stands? No, I'm actually on the sidelines uh, throughout the game. So I'm standing there watching, and you know it's really crazy. I'm not so much a football fan. Uh, I watch the guys. I basically I enjoy watching people and seeing people succeed. And as I'm watching the game, I'm just looking for keys and how they're going to succeed. How what what are they going to do to overcome something? And when I see them do it, that that's what I high five for. Oh, of course. Do you, I, do, I saw you. You did it. Do you find yourself praying, maybe with the guys during games? That might feel a little weird, but I mean, I know you probably oh, for do sure, it for sure during the game. Sure. Yeah. Things are stressful like they have been for the last two weeks i find that uh <laughs> i'm just standing there and i'm praying and i'm calling individual guys names out just asking lord uh bring about your victory bring about your victory in this person's life or in this particular situation and so it's no longer me looking at the game it's me looking at the guy and just saying i'm praying for victory for that guy not victory for the game god i don't believe god 
would really be interested in that, except for the fact that you're able to get on a platform from that victory and share his faith in such a way that you may lead others to understand who he is. So from that perspective, I believe he is interested, but from a human perspective, I pray for guys just that they would be able to have a victory. Yeah. Victory, good health, you know, glorifying God, you know, point the glory back to him, which Brock did so well. I thought after, um, after they won, uh, the NFC championship, what's the schedule like on a game day? Like, let's take the championship game, for example, for, for you, like there's a prayer I'm guessing before the game, there's certainly the prayer at the 50 that so many of us know about, but leading up to a game, what is a scheduled like for, for you as chaplain? Uh, Night before the game, um, we have chapel. Uh, and whenever team meeting's over, the day, the day that day before the game, I start off that morning with the coaches study. Uh, when I finish the coaches study, I do a player study. Then I do individual meetings with players. Uh, we were at the team hotel and. There's like team meetings and things like that. And I'm just sort of sitting around talking and making myself available to players and coaches. Uh, game day, I ride for the last seven years. I've been riding to the games with Johnny Holland, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, he, he and I have had some amazing conversations in that ride from the hotel to the stadium. And uh, so that's that when we're at home, that's what we do. Uh when we're on the road, it's, it, it changes somewhat in terms of what time we do certain things. Uh, once we're at the ho once we're at the facility or the game facility, uh, do a walk around. When the guys finish their warm ups and come back in, then I do individual prayer with players uh, throughout the locker room, uh, and then I do some group players prayers with some of the groups. Yeah. Uh, there may be a particular position group and I'll pray and I'll get them all together and we'll pray. Uh, this week has been really great. Uh, I try to figure out something. Uh, I, I try to figure out something to do each year. The guys are getting close to the playoffs. And this year I was able to order Bibles for everybody, hmm. uh, coaches, players, and uh, had them engraved with their names on them and uh gave it to them wow uh, and for me watching those guys get those bibles and uh just open them up and as we came in at halftime down and i just i guess was looking at them and i was telling each of them you know we, you have to believe if you don't believe who will believe and and that's sort of so that's what i do if someone gets hurt i'll go in the locker room and be there with them but that's sort of what my game is like no that's that's great what was the reaction for their receiving the bibles i have to imagine that's got to be one i i received a bible i'll let i'll leave the player nameless but a guy who was a hall of famer who i worked with at espn and one day i showed up and he got me a bible with my name engraved and i thought it was the greatest gift ever and i still have that bible to this day this is maybe 13 14 years ago what was that reaction like? I have to imagine that must have been wonderful here, the players and coaches. The, guy, the guys were really excited. Some guys said, hey, man, you know, my mom. I mean, they told their moms. Yeah. They, 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 you know, they, and, and, hey, my mom said, where's hers, my wife? And for me, those are the things. Uh, when you come back and tell me that you got it and you went and told someone about it, yeah, that's cool. That's special. Yeah. Um, tell me about the study that you did this if, if you were in a specific study with the players and coaches this year, what were you studying? Uh, we, we, we sort of looked at accountability and we started uh, the year with Egypt. Uh, we started the year with leaving Egypt and understanding that many times when you leave, as the Bible said, Every time there was an issue, they would go to Moses and say, it was better for us if you had left us alone. We told you to leave us alone. And so I'm just asking the guys, the coaches, players, tell me about your Egypt. Tell me about that place that God has delivered you from that occasionally you want to go back there. When things are not going well, you think that it was better there. 
the words that they used. We had food to eat. We were fine. Everything. They were slaves. You know, but that's what the enemy will do. The enemy will twist your thinking to make you think that it was better over there than it actually was. And it may allow you to be deceived in the thinking that you want to go back. And so this year, we just talked about where God has brought us from our transition. Uh, as we went through uh, at the start of the year, then we had these four questions or four, the, the, the questions as we start the year. And it was, those questions were uh, the questions of Jesus hmm. after John says, Behold the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. His uh, disciples, without another word, left him and started to follow Jesus. And, uh, you know, the, they said, well, who are you? You know, um, what are you about? Uh, where are you going? Where do you stay? Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the questions that we as men have to ask. Who are you? Uh, where are you going? Where do you stay? Uh, and Jesus asked them a question, what are you looking for? Hmm. You know, and so the, it, there, there's questions that we at, we hear him ask, and we those are the questions that we have to sort of work on as men. Uh, it gets away. It's not about sport. It's about relationship. Yeah. And when they get that, it's got to be so encouraging and bring you so much joy to see a guy walk through a season and start to get it. Well, when they get it, when they start to share and they start to bring other people with them. Uh, our chapel service this year, we started sort of light, but by the end of the season, as guys were recruiting other guys to come, you know, uh, it was like, almost like standing room. It was like this unbelievable feel that the room was being filled with new guys that were coming in that were sort of experiencing what it meant to be in that fellowship for 30 minutes and just sharing the word. And I don't talk about football because I don't know anything about it. I, I can talk about the word because I, I'm learning about it. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we do. That's beautiful. He is Earl Smith from the 49ers, their team chaplain, joining us here on Sports Spectrum. I need to ask you about Brock a little bit. I mean, I first talked to him, I think it was 2021 20, when he was at Iowa State his last year. We had an opportunity a year ago, nine days after the Niners lost to the Eagles, we were in Phoenix covering the Super Bowl and I connected with the Purdy family and suddenly find myself nine days later in the house with Sean, Carey, mom and dad, and Brock talking to him about what that experience was like last year as a rookie. And I, I mean, he had just come off of, you know, a horrible situation with the injury and the loss. And I just saw so much joy, Earl. I saw so much peace and just a confident kid who knew where his identity was rooted in. I'm just curious now that you've been his chaplain these past two years, what this has been like for you to be around such a, such an impressive young man. You know, I, I, I tell people when I met him and I looked into his eyes and saw that spirit that he had and that fire, I said, you know what, man, it's not what they call you. It's what you answer to. Mm. Uh, they may say that you're mystery relevant. And this was before uh, Trey, this was before Jim, they were still there. But what I told him, and I said that that's what that's what you're going to be known by, what you answer to, and every day that he's been there, he's taken the mantle to make sure he answers to being a man of God, and that's what he answers to. That's awesome, and I, I've loved watching him blossom on the field. I know you said you, I don't know a lot about football, and I totally get it, but you're around this young man, and you see. I don't know that fruit, you know, the victory, like you talked about, you know, the hard work. I don't think fans really understand and you're, you're inside those walls. So you see it, the amount of hard work that's put in by these players to be the best, even just to make an NFL team, much less be on the field and perform the way that so many of the Niners have done this year. 
it's just a different, it, it, people don't understand, I think, Earl, what goes into the work and the amount of preparation that goes into trying to get ready for just one game. Well, you know, one of the pro- one of the things people don't, they think that they just sort of, they, pr- they, they have this little practice time and then they go and the rest of their day they're free. They don't understand how many hours they spend with a tablet at home after practice going over things. They don't understand how many hours of classroom time is spent before they ever go on the field to process. They don't understand how many plays they were given back when they were first starting camp. And this week, they they may say, let's run this play. And they haven't ran it all year. Yeah. And yet they need to know what that play is. And so there's so much more to a guy playing on a field than just being on that field. Yeah, so much preparation. It's got to be wonderful to see that transfer into the faith element. I mean, I what you just described to me is this 23 year journey that I've been on with Jesus and like the amount of work that you put in is only going to be that preparation for when you have this opportunity, whether it's to share your faith or you're put on a platform after you win an NFC championship game and a microphone's thrown in your face, whatever that is. So much of our journey with Christ is about preparation too, isn't it? Well, you know, that's what we talked about in chapel last week Hmm. on a Saturday night. That's what we talked about prepared. And just, uh, I use the analogy of what Paul was saying about he was prepared for what God was going to do with him. And he had accepted his preparation and his word as a guarantee. And he says that I, and I, and I use the amplified version, but, but he talks about the fact that he said, he's going to give this to you. And it was a guarantee of promise that because you, he's already prepared you, there's nothing that you don't have. When God says that you're prepared, Mm -hmm. when he signs off on that, and he says, I, there's a guarantee that comes with that. It's up to you to process and accept that because those are the real things of life. And a lot of times we fail as a result of not processing and accepting the fact that God has said, you prepare for this. Hmm. You can do this. And down 17 points in an uh, NFC championship game where you've been punched in the mouth and, uh, was that the first, you know, uh, was that the first time you've been punched in the mouth? No. What did you do the last time you were punched in the mouth? Uh, Brock had a game and I just sent him a message and I said, Hey, I need you to do me a favor. Tell me what happened after you had your worst game in high school. What did you do the next week? Tell me what happened after you had your worst game at Iowa state. What did you do the next week? How did you, how did you accomplish that? I said, because that's who God is looking for right now. And so I I, I believe that God gives us examples that we can use as springboards to our future uh, situations. And if we remember those things and we live those things out, then we can say, I've been prepared. That's really well said. As we all prepare uh, to get ready to watch Super Bowl 58, it's a rematch. Four years, it feels like... uh deja vu a little bit, right? Right, Earl? I mean, it's two teams that battled four years ago. You were out there. Uh, I believe it was in Miami, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, and yeah, here we go Miami. again. Here we go again. <laughs> and uh, different different people, the, same, the, ta- the names of the teams are the same. Some of the players are the same. Uh, yet it's a great opportunity to see what you're able to do with everything coming at you because Super Bowl is more than the game. It's all the other things that you get involved with to overcome, to just get on that field on that Sunday. There's so much that goes into these guys are getting pulled. I mean, they're getting people that they haven't heard from or pulling them, all the things that take place. And uh, then you get on the field. Yeah. And it's just and a then, football game. Then it's football. That's right. It's just another game, right? It's, even though it's not just another game. Have right. you thought about the message yet that you might, we're, we're taping this a little before the week of the Super Bowl, probably you know, a week and a half before the Super Bowl, but have you thought about the message that you might want to share with the team in that last chapel? 
Uh, I'm probably going to talk about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, processing your faith journey. Hmm. Not your visual, what you know journey, but your faith journey. How, how, how old were you when you thought about playing this game? What obstacles did you overcome? And has God rewarded your faith? That's good. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait to hear about it um, after and, and hear, you know, kind of how that manifests itself and not just on the field. I think people, this is where I, 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 I fight this with a lot of my friends who are big sports fans. The measure of your faith doesn't always transfer into wins, <laughs> you know, right? like that's, that's a really hard, Oh, I had the greatest chapel ever, but we lost by 10 or, but we won by 30. And it, it was because of that chapel. It, it, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, the other team is also having a chapel, right? Yeah. Marcellus is doing it too with, with Kansas. And, City. and so Marce <laughs> over there, you know what they're saying? Man, this chapel was fantastic. <laughs> we are ready. We're charged. And so, and, and I pray for them. I pray for their chapel service. Sure. I, I pray for their service that those men that would go into that room would feel energized as a result of the relationship with Christ. So for us as chapel leaders, we have to understand that the picture is bigger than where God has set us. And so I pray for the chief players. I pray yeah. that the chapel service they received that evening would so energize them that they would be willing and pushing to be able to speak Jesus. Mm, that's beautiful. And I pray that there's 20 guys huddled around at the 50 yard line after the game, no matter what happens and giving God all the glory that he deserves. And uh, exactly. That's, that's great, Earl. Uh, let me ask you this as I wind down last question. If your story, by the way, has been depicted on Sports Spectrum, we're going to link it in the show notes because it's just such an incredible story. But if you could go back and I could have told you that kid in San Quentin at 27 labeled as a gang member and a criminal, and now 40 years later, getting to do this work that God has, has equipped you for, what would you have said to me? You know, when I was at San Quentin at 27, I was a chaplain and... Uh, before that, yeah, I was a gang member still. I mean, I tell people, if you're a gang member, you're always a gang member. It's <laughs> like, if you are a member of the 49ers and you play one play, you're all, you're an alumni. Sure. Uh, so, uh, I, I didn't see any of this. The only thing I saw was darkness until Christ light shined on it. And when he did, I, I believe that there was nothing, there's no limitations to his light. There's no limitations to what he illuminates. So for me, there was no questions there. Every day I just embrace it and say, wow, God, look what you're doing. You know, this is, a, I, I have so many wow moments now. I just, yesterday was my birthday. Yeah. So Sunday I get my birthday present a day early and it's a, you know, and it, that birthday present was a wow moment. I mean, how do you overcome 17 points and win the way those guys, that's a wow moment. Yeah. And the whole time I was saying, okay, come on, God, come on, God. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and it was, so that's, that's what I would say is that he brought me from those places that I was to be where I needed to be. Mm, that's beautifully said. He is Earl Smith. Uh, we'll be watching my friend. I always appreciate your time. It's great to reconnect with you. I hope to see you soon. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. All the best to you. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you for the invitation. And many thanks to Earl Smith for being our guest today on Sports Spectrum. It is Super Bowl 58 week, and we're going to be down there. Yes, we're going to be down in Las Vegas, Nevada, covering the Super Bowl. Great content, interviews, stories, you know it. We're going to be bringing it to you the best that we can do at Sports Spectrum. So make sure you're following along at SportsSpectrum.com. Make sure you're following along on our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. Sports Spectrum is going to be, and you'll see the stories that you won't hear anywhere else. The stories of faith in the world of professional football at the biggest event of the year, Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, Nevada. We got the 49ers and the Chiefs. It's a rematch from the Super Bowl four years ago. And here we go. Many thanks to Reverend Earl Smith for being our guest today on Sports Spectrum. And we thank you as well for tuning in. Stay tuned. I'm telling you, more content coming throughout the week 
here on the Sports Spectrum Podcast. We love you guys. We appreciate you tuning in. Please tell some people. Tell some people about Sports Spectrum, what we're doing, keeping Jesus in the football conversation at Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Have a great rest of your day, and thanks for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Hey, thanks for watching our Sports Spectrum video. For more conversations on the intersection of sports and faith, check out our website, sportsspectrum.com.